Hi, I'm David Charney from eLearningLocker.com. So today I want to take a quick look at this. This is a little project I put together in Storyline uh, for one of the other videos that I made about foregoing the, the next button. Uh, I'll put a link somewhere for that. Uh, but a number of people have asked me how this was put together. Uh, the interaction's pretty straightforward, but the, uh, the graphics are a little bit uh, more complicated. So I wanted to kind of break it down and show I put that together. Uh, so again, you can click this or touch and drag and drop this uh, piece of paper in this bin. And the scene slides over. You can grab this chair, reposition it so you can put the scene back together and it slides over. And then finally you grab this little uh, eraser and you can erase this whiteboard. And once you do that, uh, the scene slides over again and so on. So yeah, let's break it down and see how it was put together. Okay, here we are in Storyline and we can break down each screen we have here. Uh, I've really got three main screens with interactions on them. And this is the first one. I'll run this. This is the simplest of them all. Uh, I'm going to click and drag and drop this in here, and it will move forward. Just to note a couple of things in here, just to make it a little bit easier for the user. Uh, if you drag this and drop it anywhere else than the hot spot, it'll just return back to where it left off. Uh, and that's usually helpful because uh, you know exactly where it's going to go. And uh, if the uh, user is not used to drag and drop, uh, it doesn't get lost somewhere out here. You'll see that I've got a pretty simple interface. I've actually got no other buttons on the screen. So I wanted a background that was kind of uh, nice and clean, had a little bit of color to it. And uh, then I've got a little box here, very simple white box with some real simple text treatments. And you'll notice that each one of these slides has the same sort of thing. The background is a different environment, but uh, they all have similarities. They all have bits of color to them. Uh, the text treatment and the, the white box are all the same. Uh, and that adds a lot of consistency to, to this. Someone will feel like they're in the same uh, module on any screen they're at. So how do we make this work? First off, number of elements. We've got a background. We've got this foreground element, this uh, recycle bin. We've got this piece of paper, and these are all cut out. And these were pings, and I brought it in each ping. And I'm working on another video where I will show the details of how I cut things out like this. And uh, often you're cutting things out, and you're putting a little bit of a shadow underneath, so it feels kind of grounded to the environment. But what you want to do is I'll show you with a new slide. Usually you've got an object and you've got a hot spot. So let me grab the object here, this piece of paper, and I've got, I'll make this a little bit bigger. This is my hot spot. I'm going to convert to freeform. I'm going to choose drag and drop. Again, this is storyline two, and it's going to give me a choice. I want to drop this paper wad ping to this rectangle. Now if I go back to slide view, uh, when I drop this, it will, now I'll run this here. I'm gonna drop this and there we go. It knows that's a, a shape. And you can see I don't have it set to uh, always go back to where it left off. I can do that by going back into form view going to drag and drop options and click on return item to start point if dropped outside any drop target. And I only have one drop target, so that's fine. So if I run this again, I can, if I try to drop it out here, it'll go back here, it'll go back, but on there it'll, it's set to center itself on the hot spot. So back in my main view, that's how that works. Now a couple other things you'll notice. On this piece of paper, I've got uh, an animation. It's a motion path. This will drop and bounce a little bit. And I've got two second duration. Under speed, I've got bounce. You can see I've got that line straight down. So it just comes down and bounces. I also have the direction to out rather than in out. And in out is how it eases. So if it's in out, it starts slow, speeds up, and slows down again. If it's out, it will it'll start at speed and slow down as it gets to the end point. 
then I wanted something a little bit more interesting than it just popping to the next screen. I wanted someone to feel like they were moving on. So under the next screen, I've got a transition of uncover, and that'll make it feel like the whole screen is sliding away when you move on to the next slide. So moving on to the next slide, this slide is very similar. If I run this, this chair falls down and it bounces a little bit, just like that piece of paper. I can pick that up and you can see that hot spot there. And again, I've cut this out and I've got a little drop shadow underneath. And that again, makes it look a little bit more grounded. Now, if I drop this on this hot spot or anywhere near it, it wants to move on again. And you can see it snaps itself to the right position. Now this is a little bit more complicated the way I did this because I need this to snap to the right spot. And the way that the drag and drop hotspot works is I don't, if I let go of this, I don't want it to stay there. I don't want it to stay there. I want it to stay right in the middle, right there. But my hotspot isn't up here, it's down here. So you can set objects to jump to the middle of a hotspot, as you'll see there. See how it jumped down, so it's kind of centered in the middle. But I didn't want it to be there. I wanted it to be up here. So I created a little bit of a trick for that. And you can see it here. When you drop this object, you can see I've got two objects here. I've got one that's hidden. See, the initial state is hidden, so you won't see this here. When you drop this onto this hotspot, which you can't see here. Let me hide this. So this is a hotspot as well as a, uh, a dashed line uh, to represent the, the drop zone. Uh, when, I'll turn this back on, when this object is dropped on that hotspot, it will set this object to hidden. And also when that same action happens, when this is dropped onto that hotspot, I, I set this state to normal. So now you can see it. So it's not the same chair I end up with, but now I can set that chair exactly where I want. This is a non-draggable chair, so when you drop this into place, whether if you're off to the side a little bit or up or down, it will, it will show up in the exact location I want it to once you let go. Moving on to the next screen, again, similar environment, a similar uh, text treatment, but we've got this whiteboard back here, and I've got this little eraser that, that again, falls from the top and bounces a little bit to draw your eye to it. Then uh, you can click and drag, and as you drag it erases this board. So how I do that is I've got a whole bunch of little freeform objects here, and I made those just by going to shape and drawing out a shape like this, and then going to states, and I created a new state called like not so visible or something. And then I make that state zero transparency and no line color. So now you can't see it. Oh, and then I, I go back and I set the initial state to not so visible. Now I can't use hidden here because I'm gonna, when I drop, when I drag this object over these items, I want them to react. So if they're hidden, it won't react because it does seem that the screen doesn't see them there. So then pretty simple, change state of freeform one. So change the state of this to normal when this object is dragged over it. So as you drag this object over it, they just all start to get set back to normal. And you can see that I've just made sure that when they're all turned on, it hides everything on the whiteboard. And then I've got a simple trigger here that says show layer move next. And I'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to show this layer when the state of all of these freeforms is normal. So if all these freeforms are now normal, then show this layer. And the reason I show this layer instead of just moving right on is because just the way storyline works, it would move on before it was able to hide that last item I rolled over. And so it, as it slid away, it looked like I hadn't erased the whole board. So I have a little trigger on move next, which starts at the end of the timeline. And then the timeline 
ends at a half a second. So that's just enough time for it to hide the board or hide the uh, the last item that you've rolled over and then slide over to this last scene, which I don't have any interactions on. So as you can see, each screen has a very similar kind of interaction, but there's little differences. And so we need to brainstorm and problem solve uh, often to try to figure out the best way to end up with the result that you're looking for. And uh, at least with Storyline, it does have a lot of options, even though you're you're kind of being tricky about it. Uh, but ultimately, you, you can figure out something that'll get you close enough to work the way you want it to. And let's just run this one more time. So again, the paper drops down, so it kind of draws your eye to it. I'm going to click and drag and drop that. The scene slides over, and then the chair falls. I'm going to click and drop that over the hot spot, and you'll notice that the chair slightly repositions itself, but it doesn't uh, try to center itself on that hot spot. It stays exactly where we want it to. Scene slides over again. We've got our eraser here. If I drag that eraser over all the items there, it slides over to our final uh, screen. And that's it. That's how this was put together. Uh, hopefully it'll maybe act as a little bit of uh, inspiration and uh, throw some ideas into your head on what you can do on your own projects. If you like this video, please subscribe so you know when new videos come out. Also, get this project on elearninglocker.com so you can download it and take a look yourself. Happy learning!